okay so uh, good morning everyone uh, first of all apology for the technical glitch uh, which we have faced uh, right now uh, for whatever reason i was not able to uh, enter into the meeting room yeah so first of all i will introduce myself my name is istia kwatan and i am a solution architect industry 4.0 uh in evosis uh i have a background of working in manufacturing industry uh be it process or discrete and then i also handled many of the uh, uh certain projects uh, uh related to manufacturing erp and uh, now i am working with a technology team as a solution architect for a manufacturing domain in industry 4.0 so i will take you to this presentation in which we will uh, uh majorly talk about the use cases uh, of industry 4.0 uh, uh, which which touched down to uh, 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 the concept itself so first of all let us see the agenda so the agenda for today's uh, presentation from my side is that uh, first of all we will see that industry 4.0 overview so as an industry 4.0 itself is a version Uh, so first we will take down that how it has evolved from uh, uh, certain versions and now what are the expectation from this concept then we will look out uh, to the domain application which are available in the market we can say the domain use cases which are available in the market for the particular concept because industry 4.0 is is not a single module or or it's not a, a a single package which can be directly implemented to a particular industry or particular factory so there are different concepts uh, which need different technological components we will look after that then we will see couple of solutions now it is most important in 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 case of technology if we talk uh, we need a, a concrete use cases where these things are been implemented or 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 at least uh, proof of concept or proof of values been proved uh, into the business so we will look out some of the solutions the main solution we will focus because uh, uh with a given time we don't have uh, uh, that leverage to talk each and every use case so we will take one of the sample use cases as an constraint based scheduling which is common in uh, uh, all of the manufacturing process we face and finally we will talk about how the industry 4.0 really help to the business how different stakeholder stakeholders can can do or can take the benefit of it yeah so uh, as an overview first i will take you to the different version as i said uh, so it 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 started in late 18th century in which a mechanisms and and different introduction of steam and water power has been introduced into in the industry to do the work uh, to to produce something to manufacture something so that was defined as an industry 1.0 version Uh, uh which has been evolved uh, uh in 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 number of decades in number of years as an industry 2.0 where mass productions and assembly line, uh, lines came into the picture using the electrical power mainly automobile industry took 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 uh, uh, uh this leverage or we can say utilize this version uh, majorly in which uh, uh, a number of vehicles uh, been manufacturing in a particular day with the same number of wins with the same type of operations into the production lines but of course without electrical power or we can say without electricity involved into the production this might not have been achieved now uh, that also uh, uh, gave or, or that also went it to in, uh, into its peak uh, as an industry 2.0 version then we need or or we we required some of the automations or robotics part to do uh, the manufacturing um the process continuously with more accuracy and precision and 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 uh, saving the time uh, using the robotics using the automations etc so your industry 3.0 came into the picture when uh, automated production computer it system came and and helped the production industry uh, helped the manufacturing industry to produce goods with with more accuracy and precision and there were again there were different factors of benefits which 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 uh, uh, were taken or we can say uh, which were utilized from this version now uh, we we stand on we, we stand on uh, uh, we can't say it is not a mature uh, uh, version as an industry 4.0 
for some concepts for some use case it is very much mature and for some use case or for some industries it is still uh, 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 developing itself uh, um, with different applications and with different technologies but here we need uh, uh, some data or the data which has been generated by the automation devices sensors motors uh, and 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 different plc and scada systems we need that data we need to analyze that data and we need to improve our manufacturing processes so it is not industry 4.0 is not only about monitoring the factory it is also about getting the data analyzing it and 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 taking the correct actions to improve your operations process safety workplace etc so so this how it has been evolved and 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 there are there are uh, evidence for for the last versions that it became successful for uh, for, for the particular uh, uh, after particular uh, uh, amount of time uh, invested and 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 the monetary investment which was which was been done into that version now uh, as i said in the agenda part also that industry 4.0 uh, we need to understand that it is not just a module uh, so it, it 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 does not limit to your production floor only because there are some concept in which we talk about if industry 4.0 people understand that it it only relates to your manufacturing floor or manufacturing industry etc no that's not true over here uh, if we say industry 4.0 your assets should be smart your workplace should be workplace should, uh, should be uh, uh, enabled with the with the, with this concept uh, your production should be enabled with this concept your supply chain management should be enabled with the concept so these are the list of areas which can be touched and of course there are other uh, beyond this there are other like connected workers and etc uh, 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 which can be which can be utilized uh, uh, in this concept but uh, we can see that each and every area can be touched, uh, uh, be it asset utilization, quality control, and in asset utilization, asset tracking, environmental tracking, energy consumption, fault and detection, predictive maintenance. This is a very much useful use case for uh, for the company or for the organization with the valuable assets. Uh, organization like construction industry, organization like uh, where where there is a whole automation for end-to-end -end products. So. Uh, now it's not possible to talk on each and every domain application uh, in this session. So we have highlighted some of the applications which we will touch, and we will we will see how uh, how the business has utilized uh, uh, in terms of uh, um, these domain applications. So we will look look that now uh, as an industry 4.0. We have taken one use case. Uh, uh, we, have, we have taken a couple of use cases to present uh, over here into the presentations. But this is the most important use case according to me because in my experience, I have seen that uh, scheduling process uh, is 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 related, or we can say we we find the scheduling process in each and every manufacturing company, factory, or section be it process manufacturing or a discrete manufacturing, be it mass production or, or be it uh, make to order or be it uh, 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 anything else. So the, the scheduling is the common practice which we see into the manufacturing industry. And just because it is a common practice and it is used widely, there are some problem statement which we have identified uh, for the manufacturing industry whenever we say that there is a scheduling is required so as you can see on my screen uh, we just take a very simple example over here that machine zero one and three there are three machines and there are three jobs to be performed now if you ask a, a scheduler a human being to schedule the uh, job over it so as a human or as a system or let's let's take an example of an excel also we have some limitation to decide which job to be start where means which machine should operate which job at what particular of time what are different constraints to it right so uh, uh, so, so 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 taking this simple example we have defined different problem statements so uh, while identifying the problem statement from the particular industry we found that modeling problems is the basic problem which which we found in the current uh, 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 manufacturing scenario 
uh, first of all variety of recipes used for manufacturing so uh, if you have the same product also like let's take an example of a semiconductor industry they produce uh, a semiconductor conductor chips be it a same product uh, at that level at their level but if uh, uh, the design change from customer to customer from order to order okay so just because your semiconductor design or chip design chains uh, you need to change into your recipes so your process time for different machines different operations will change your skill sets will change right so uh, the first problem is uh, in that on 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 a single under single roof if you if you need to produce or if you need to manufacture uh, product with variety of recipes for manufacturing then that is a problem and on another end from the business side we need to accommodate this or we need to respect this because in today's condition the manufacturing business is versatile you need to produce versatile product uh, at your end to be in the market to to be uh, uh, in this competition uh, which has been um, uh, designed for it so, and another problem uh, state, uh, modeling problem we have stated is that variety of products so we have also found in some industry in fmcg industry uh and and uh, we can take an fmcg industry example over here that uh, uh, under same roof there are different pro products needs to be pro uh, uh, produced uh, let's take an example of refined oil right so so be it at same uh, same uh, uh, a product the if the packaging is different you need to make adjustment at a machine level and at a at a at a plan level or at a scheduling level so you have the variety of product uh, involved in it and there are different types of resource machine or labor so as i said we need to utilize our resource very smartly to uh, uh, to optimize uh, our cost to optimize uh, the 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 cost which is incurred to produce the product etc similarly we have found the scheduling uh, modification and rescheduling as a problem statement in which there are unexpected event of machine or factory background we uh, those who are from manufacturing uh, industry working on floor they can understand this part that machine can break can can be can break down at any point of time uh, of course there are different parameters affected to it but but that event can happen at any point of we have to be ready for that uh, process step duration variability of course we have planned something but it took more time it took less time so so again that is that is an uh, uh, problem in scheduling business issues when i say business issue it's very generic i will give you an example for uh, this business issue let's take an example you got an order uh, from a customer a and you took that order into your production house you are producing things uh, or, or, or you are executing that order uh, uh, on the floor but into your middle of the duration or the uh, into your into your uh, 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 mid of your operations suddenly the order got get cancelled for whatsoever reasons okay so you need to again reschedule uh, your whole plan and uh, of course there are different manual adjustments which which again depends on scheduler to scheduler uh, uh, some 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 uh, human beings as in scheduler are very accurate on their part and some some uh, might might uh, uh, not able to adjust that part. Uh, so yeah. So uh, while defining this uh, uh, problem statement for the particular use case, we have we we designed a solution for that, and uh, we kept it in a very layman language uh, as a solution. So we we doesn't uh, want to go in the technology stake and explain you the whole ar uh, architecture in the technology part, but we keep it very business wise. So what we do, uh, we take the plant data. We say plant data. It means where is your preventive maintenance where is the breakdown when you are going leaves holidays etc when then we take your recipe data so whatever manufacturing plant you have we take your recipe data we take as a master data that for producing a particular product you need this recipe this machines this much time etc and we take your order database right so uh, we, we, we take that order database and we convert it into a manufacturing order and then we run a scheduler algorithm which is an automatic algorithm which decides on your business logic first of all it is designed on the basis of your given business logic and on the basis of that business logic it decide which work order needs to be uh, executed at what particular time right so 
every time if you find the issue let's take an again example of a business issue in which the customer has cancelled the order so you just cancel that order into your system run the algorithm again and that order will be pushed back and another order will be taken into the priority so you don't need to uh, uh, go with the scheduler next morning ask him to reschedule because we have cancelled cancellation order etc uh, etc et so there is a analytic engine and a search engine which which comes to and it's it's an automatic uh, algorithm which runs so there is of course uh, we will we, we have kept the leverage or we have kept that uh, uh, freedom for a user to give them inputs but on the basis of that inputs whatever scheduling is done it is done by a, a proper algorithm and then we display that data i will show you some of the images for that so this is something uh, which we have uh, uh, designed or, or which we have uh, uh, done done as a proof of concept of course using the oracle technology stakes uh, and uh, if you can see over here uh, so on on the y-axis there are machine one two three four five six we have three lots and there is a timestamp uh, on the x-axis so if you can see the whole lot has been scheduled on the on on the screen uh, against the time uh, on 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 the time frame and this everything is done by uh, uh, algorithm itself okay. Uh, while looking at your machine availability, while looking at your different business logic like priority, uh, how much important it is, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, this is for only example for our three lots. We can have n number of lots for it. You can have a different business units like two business units running on a two different products or a product line. You can have two different screens for it. So it 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 depends on what are the requirements uh, at the customer side. So I will just take you uh, uh, quick that how this industry 4.2 actually helps. Now the use case which I have shown is not an analytical use case only. It's an use case for an industry 4.0. We need to be smart to schedule, right? So how it will help? So first of all, it will help you in booking the new sales order when you when you are booking. Uh, let's say your sales team is booking a new sales order. You know the current load of your production house you know the lot completion co completion date or work order completion date before releasing the work order right you are you got an order and if your customer is asking for a delivery date you can at least be precise or at, you can at least rely on an algorithm which will give you the date right i i can understand it might also get hampered because of other reasons like breakdown maintenance and etc but you have a, a good realistic date with your current workload and if it's changed also it will have a proper logic behind it be it a maintenance etc uh, then you also have the upcoming maintenance schedules you can see the slots where my, where my machine is not being utilized properly so i can take it into the maintenance so we can give that alert uh, for the particular time uh, when work order is released so when i say work order is released it means a production guy how production guy leverage this uh, uh, use case is that First of all, it is very easy to reschedule. Just put uh, uh, whatever uh, work order is go being on hold. Just put on hold and rerun the algorithm. You will get the new schedule. Put the another logic, uh, whatever has been uh, uh, disturbed, or we can say whatever has been affected into the production floor, and rerun the algorithm. You will get the new uh, schedule. Knowledge of machine utilization. Now, this is this is the most important uh, use case uh, we can say use uh, what a production floor people can take out of this that you know that what is your machine utilization and of course a knowledge of upcoming maintenance etc uh, for work order execution part you can control the delivery days flexible to reschedule with is uh, till the last operation and low risk of tool or requirement breakdown so these are the helps on this part uh, and another use case i will i will be a little fast on this because because you know the the the, the uh, structure how we are going for the use case the another use case is for process manufacturing industry is air knife galvanizing line effect which which we have designed for the particular industry but it doesn't uh, limit to this only air knife galvanizing effect industry uh, in, in in other times i will say that any of the process manufacturing industry which have the automated sensor parameter needs to be set for for the quality purposes uh, this use can can be used so modeling problems are same we have variety of recipes products and uh, etc 
process and product problems are different in this case in which difficult to control the quality of final product so in many of the process manufacturing industry what happens that uh, uh, you are only being communicated or let's take an example of air knife galvanizing effect if the galvanizing uh, 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 knife or let's say the, uh, the the galvanizing thickness on the aluminium is more right uh, more than the limit of the tolerance in micron also your lot get rejected okay but that you can only be controlled at the final state so your whole aluminium material the whole order get hampered over that so difficult to control the quality of final product risk of high rejection in finished goods as i said that uh, at the end if you are able to find out it's a bit difficult uh, to control that difficult to analyze the root cause of lot rejections you have many parameters which are affecting your uh, uh, quality final product quality right so uh, in that case uh, if you need to go go back to investigate that which parameter troubleshoot or due to which parameter we are facing some issues we will not able to do in the current automation even uh, with plc scada system also because it doesn't give you the exact uh, relation between the output and inputs uh, difficult to control machines man inputs on the real time basis etc so what we did uh, we have designed uh, again we have designed a very a layman solution over here and which can you uh, which which you can see that what we do is that we collect the sensor and the plc data for the particular lot which has been executed and then we see that what is the output okay now using again uh, uh, with, a, with, with, a, with a particular algorithm we train the algorithm in such a way that it controls your plant sensor data uh, I, we, we have to go with uh, the another slide for this uh, so uh, on the left hand side uh, this enters zinc thickness enter strip thickness and enter strip width so this is the quality what we need like on 1 mm or let's say 1 meter of uh, strip width of aluminium we need 0.9 micron of zinc thickness so this is my best quality what i need now to maintain this quality what should my production parameters so what should be my line speed what should be my zinc pot temp zinc pot temperature what should be my radiant temperatures what should be my nozzle distance so this all is suggested by an algorithm that to maintain this with current uh, machines with current parameters and with current cycles uh, uh, you need this parameter to be set uh, on your machines now uh, again i will go to the, the the previous slide so if you can see i have given one uh, uh, input control box over here this says that whatever parameters need to be con controlled we can give an closed loop input to a plc scada system to maintain that parameter for that output so in this case we are pretty much sure with our historical data that to maintain this particular uh, uh, quality of thickness we need this parameter now as i said this doesn't uh, this does not only limit to a air knife zinc solution only any solution which have number of parameters affecting the output can be controlled with this particular solution right so you have an historical data in which your different parameters are affecting your quality data we can train an algorithm and we can ask an algorithm whenever required that to achieve particular uh, 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 quality uh, for any of the product uh, what should be the input parameters so this how it can be done uh, i will just uh, take you uh, to the how it, how how does it really help to the business uh, so descriptive analysis uh, uh, if you see the descriptive analysis part this solution will help you to know the root cause uh, when we say the root cause it means it will show you that if you have not achieved the quality which parameter uh, uh, has been troubleshoot or has gone above the tolerance limit due to which the quality has been hampered behavior of particular machine sensor affecting the output so we can give uh, 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 the behavior that how your particular uh, now now uh, uh, let's take an example of uh, of of the heaters right 
so insulator heaters are are very hidden into into the machine so if they are not exposed to you and sometimes what happens that insulation due to insulation the the heaters are not working properly or the heaters are burst out so and you will you will not know until and unless you get the correct behavior daily so we can predict the data if it is going to burst or if if it is burst we can have a corrective measure over there uh, uh, with help of the um, uh, data which or we can say the graph which is available predictive analysis again uh, we can predict the overshooting value of particular machine and sensors help in predicting the plant plant uh, plant output and performance prescriptive is again uh, we can prescribe something that to achieve this unit this reduction in quality rejection so this is the most important part uh, in terms of manufacturing in metal manufacturing industry and etc that you can control the final uh, quality rejections uh, another domain application if we need to talk that uh, now people are uh, talking about smart logistics like uh, a customer should know where his order is being lying uh, from which route it came from which temperature especially in the food uh, food processing or the food industry you need to have the data that uh, 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 at what parameter it has uh, been dispatched to you uh, in the pharmaceutical industry also so we will talk a minute or two on the smart logistic parts that to see the real time fleet visibility digital transformation of the fleet uh, improve estimated time of arrival and integrated with the supply chain so the whole uh, smart logistic part which is which is used for the industry 4.0 can be achieved uh, you can see uh, or you can monitor uh, your real time fleet uh, 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 with your shipments package and etc you can digitally transform your uh, uh, your your fleet when i say digitally transform is it means that you can see your driver behavior uh, uh, uh with driver behavior what was your average consumption of fuel of particular fleet uh what was your uh, uh different parameters like what was the temperature which been maintained uh throughout the fleet what were the different position in 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 the historical data in last seven days or 30 days uh for the particular parameter improved estimated time of arrival prediction so of course if you need if you have the real time gps data you can you can monitor that what are the ETA and you can uh, uh, the business can uh, uh, utilize uh, the number of play in the most optimized manner and of course it is integrated with the supply chain so whatever it be like uh, OTM uh, Oracle transport uh, transportation management or any other legacy uh, transportation management system can be integrated and and can be uh, can can talk to each other into the out-of-box integrations uh, other most important part we need, which we need to uh, talk uh, that is a smart manufacturing uh, so this comes comes into the picture when you have uh, a, a factory uh, which needs to be monitored uh, for the particular or, or for number of products and you have a, a routing and everything so we will talk on the some of the features so as i said uh, that uh, industry 4.0 made simple um, so uh, be it manufacturing on the production or an assets, uh, uh, this can be designed. Uh, you can define a digital manufacturing twin. So let's take an example. Uh, uh, you you doesn't want to incur the cost in uh, in in procuring new sensors for your new machines, right? So what you can do, uh, or uh, 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 IoT applications give you a functionality uh, in which you can define your digital twin and you can see the behavior of the system so before going to into the real world you can define your digital manufacturing twin as in factory whole as, as, as a whole factory also and you can see that how different parameters behaves on the business logic again prescript uh, prescriptive analytics this improve uh, the machine and factory uptime with machine learning models this is very much important when 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 there is a um, uh, manufacturing concepts comes into picture and manufacturing and SCM integration so this is again a very uh, important part that how your uh, manufacturing work orders can directly be integrated to a manufacturing IoT so it's just like you can you can monitor your ERP work orders live onto into the production uh, monitoring system 
so anything you plant as a work order or your planning planning system as planned as a work order it will directly be monitored uh, into the application yeah so the last use case but not least uh, is is the smart assets uh, uh, so it is it is very much important when when you have a number of uh, assets uh, in organization uh, especially in the construction and and manufacturing industry uh, which are important to be tracked uh, not only for the reason of 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 the operations but also reasons of of misuse or theft or 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 any other uh, uh, compliance purposes so uh, we can monitor the asset, at asset we can digitalize the assets uh, like we can have the digital twin for the uh, assets uh, the another important uh, topic which which we can cover over is the predictive maintenance for the assets so uh, if your if your asset uh, let, let's take an example of an air compressor system so so there are different terms of air compression system uh, into different manufacturing process and it is an important asset uh, for the manufacturing or the construction industry so you can monitor the different parameter of that compressor and you can predict when it when it it is going to uh, outperform or we can say when it is going to burst uh, 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 in terms of parameters uh, when we say parameter it means temperature pressure vibration current uh, if your motor is 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 running over the load it will draw more current uh, uh, electric more electric current so you can predict from the pattern itself that now your motor belt has some wear and tear issue and because of that it is uh, under uh, load or slipping uh, out of breath and we need to do a maintenance so these are uh, different and of course enterprise ready it means optimize uh, the supply chain these are also be closely integrated with the supply chain modules and we can use it so uh, as i said we are not uh, uh, we will not able to discuss each and every use case but uh, in, in in a nutshell i will show i will i will discuss uh, the other solutions so uh, in power generation industry we can we can do a predictive maintenance uh, we can do a corrective maintenance and we can optimize maintenance cycles so for power generation just because they have a continuous uh, uh, a cycle of generating the power uh, uh the predictive maintenance and the corrective maintenance becomes most important because you can't uh, uh down the system for 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 a couple of days also so for for power generation industry uh, this this can be done for pharmaceutical industry um, we can do a best process cycle out of all cycles uh, uh, in 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 a in a domain terms that is known as a golden batch so we can we can uh, uh, present you that out of uh, number of lots you have created this was the best uh, lot in in the perspective quality in prospect uh, in 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 uh, in respect of uh, time you have been produced uh, optimize and improve the production cycle this can be done and uh, we can do a continuous improvement uh, in pharmaceutical industry using this uh, component uh, final uh, discrete manufacturing so optimization of the process and cycle times with smart algorithm can be done which which i have which we have uh, uh, seen in this presentation only and consider different factors while scheduling so this can be done so these are the other solutions which can be achieved for industry 4.0 using technology and different stakeholders so i have tried to uh, cover now i will uh, uh, transfer this uh, the screen uh, just a minute i will i will just transfer it to uh, Mois, uh, my colleague from Oracle, and uh, at the end we can take uh, the the Q and A part. Yeah, okay, thank you, Ishtiak. Uh, we saw many references to IoT uh, in uh, and uh, machine learning and analytics in Ishtiak's uh, presentation today. Uh, now, uh, Robert uh, Piotrak, uh, my colleague, and uh, myself uh, will be uh, so we'll be presenting uh the uh, how uh, oracle technology can fit in the evosis uh, solution or some of oracle technologies uh, starting from an operational system such as uh, factory machines and operators or a set of assets uh, like assets of a factory for example or a fleet uh, we will be able to position one or uh, several iot applications which embed uh, artificial intelligence and uh, machine learning technologies 
uh, blockchain also uh, to raise the data collected, analyze it, use it to build the history, statistics, uh, predict incidents, and even suggest corrective actions uh, based on machine learning, for example. All this is possible through uh, various tools such as uh, web consoles, such as, as a chatbot, a mobile interface, analytics tools, uh, of course, in a secure environment. Uh, we have the following uh, IoT applications uh, in our portfolio, or let's say some of them, uh, like asset monitoring, cloud, uh, fleet monitoring, production monitoring, connected worker, uh, service monitoring, so you see the connection with the EVOSIS uh, solution. Uh, let's see some in detail, uh, like asset monitoring cloud. Uh, you can use uh, Oracle Internet of Things Asset Monitoring Cloud to improve uh, uh, profitability uh, through automated monitoring and alerting of assets, uh, to gain also real-time visibility into asset health and utilization and to predict future events. Um, uh, this lets you track the real-time location, health, and utilization of your assets. Uh, this lets you view also your assets and analytics on the dashboard and automate uh, actions based on predictive insights from your business applications. What about the production uh, monitoring cloud? Uh, it gives you a holistic view on um, a factory level uh, to see all your production lines as they appear on your shop floor and uh, select a specific production line for more details. Uh, on a product level, uh, to monitor the progress of your products, uh, visualize product routing, identify bottlenecks, uh, and also on the machine level, to view machine availability statistics, uh, visualize associated sensor data in pinpoint problem areas, and to identify machines, uh, machine issues that affect the production output. Uh, the connected worker uh, uh, cloud is designed to achieve safety and operational excellence in the mining industry, engineering and construction industries especially. Uh, it enables these indices to boost worker health and safety, to comply with health and safety regulations, to manage holistically with descriptive analytics, and uh, it integrates with the uh, human capital management, production management systems. Uh, the service monitoring, uh, the IoT, uh, service monitoring cloud is an IoT cloud also designed to monitor in real time machines and equipment to ensure uptime and uh, to increase the efficiency of your factories. Also to predict machine failures and to enable preventive corrective actions. And uh, also we have, uh, of course, the fleet uh, monitoring cloud. Uh, so, uh, Oracle IoT Analytics uh, heavily uses machine learning and uh, uh, artificial inter intelligence technologies. Uh, the use of the later, which is artificial intelligence, is done in four stages. Uh, statistical trend detection stage, uh, self-detection of anomalies stage, uh, a prediction of the future state stage, and a perspective prescriptive stage, which is the uh, insurance of recommendations for corrective actions, uh, where the machine learning uh, plays a role. Uh, one of the major roles of machine learning in the factory is uh, automatic anomaly detection and equipment prognostics. Uh, an optimal maintenance can be scheduled uh, for the factory, but uh, the IoT production maintenance can suggest changes uh, to the original schedule. Uh, well, uh, now I hand in the microphone to uh, my colleague, uh, Robert. Robert, there is no voice. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, go ahead, Robert. Okay, so I will start. <clears throat> I will start from the beginning because uh, I heard that there were some issues with my, uh, with my presentation. So I'm sharing the screen again, and I will go back to the first slide. So uh, uh, Oracle Analytics is a solution that supports Internet of Things initiatives. Uh, our mission is to help people to see data in new ways, discover new insights, and unlock endless possibilities. 
products such as Oracle Analytics help to unlock power of IoT data with modern visualization tools. Uh, Oracle Analytics is the industry most complete analytics solution combining many different capabilities such as self-service, data preparation, uh, mobile access, collaboration, interactive dashboards, reporting, and also out-of-the-box applications. Oracle Analytics can access any data in from many different data sources, also including IoT sensors, and may be deployed anywhere in a cloud, on-premise, and also uh, as a hybrid solution. So uh, we brought to the market completely new analytics vision that includes very important capabilities such as augmented analytics, broad integration and collaboration functionality. Uh, we know that our, our augmented analytics and augmented data management currently are top technology trends and this will have significant disruptive potential over the next three to five years. Also, in the next few years, more than 50% 50 of, 50 of IT systems will incorporate data intelligence that uses real-time data to improve decisions. For example, IoT sensor provides a lot of data, but to be useful, business user must be able to spot a trend and take action on that data. In a such massive amount of data, end user must be supported by augmented technology using the uh, using uh, for example machine learning technologies the next key capability is uh, integration and uh, in such massive uh, the next thing capability is uh, integration in many cases uh, iot data must be combined uh, with the data from other business systems whether or population data to for a deeper understanding and for prediction of trends and relations. So collaborate, last one, collaborative analytics, for example, data sharing, collective analysis are very important because they speed up actions, speed up decisions making, they enable faster innovation because collaboration around data brings different stakeholders with a different perspective on the problem and this way problem may be fixed much faster. Oracle Analytics provides uh, the industry most comprehensive cloud analytics in a single unified platform. It supports more than 50 data sources, it's extendable, it supports open standards, includes a very cost-effective data store and data processing solution such as autonomous data warehouse. It also includes self-service visualization capabilities, powerful data preparation, enterprise reporting, including also some advanced features, uh, including machine learning and uh, self-learning analytics to deliver proactive insights. This is all in one integrated platform with very low total cost of ownership. Data visualization capabilities are supported on many devices, from PC computers to various mobile devices for uh, fast and remote Arno, access to it's, uh, Tennessee is a Data visualization includes charts, maps, advanced capabilities, such as forecasting or geolocation-based analysis. Only a slide. Oracle Analytics also implements machine learning and special and specialized specialized uh, time series algorithms. And the analytics functionality enables an IoT application to analyze the data sent by sensors and provide meaningful insights, predictions, and recommendation. Thank you for this part. Now it's a time for uh, questions. Okay, so I don't see any questions, so thank you, and I will... Thank you for the wonderful presentation, and apologies for the technical glitches. Uh, we'll be sharing over the presentation and uh, the YouTube link uh, of the video to you, to the attendees, as well as to the registrants. Thank you all for joining.